let's move on to talking about how that mathematical model is going to be solved. What is the strategy used in the numerical solution? And it's the same framework that we've seen before. So you go from your mathematical model, boundary value problem, to a set of algebraic equations relating neighboring nodal displacements. Except that now I have four coupled boundary value problems rather than the one boundary value problem that we have seen before in, in simpler problems. And again, you know, um, we use the piecewise polynomial approximation for the three components of the displacement. So that's, that's unchanged. But the algebraic equations are not going to be linear. They're going to be nonlinear, and I have indicated it this way, um, that you have a set of nonlinear algebraic equations. And the, the nonlinear, you know, not all the algebraic equations are going to be nonlinear. Only the equations that are written for the nodes at the interfaces between, you know, between the parts, because attraction becomes unknown and becomes coupled of displacement. So, you know, when you're writing um, the non the algebraic equation at the at the interfaces, you could get, you know, because the traction, the way you express attraction, you could get nonlinear terms such as products of two unknown displacements. And compare this nonlinear, you know, equation to the linear case. Okay, so you can't separate out the the degree of freedom, the, the, the vector of displacements out and multiply it by a constant matrix. You can't do that when you have nonlinear equations. So how do we need to extend the solution strategy to solve this nonlinear equation, set of algebraic equations? We use the Newton Raphson method and um, in, in you know later when we do the CFD um, we'll be using the same method, newton raphson or Newton's method, to linearize the algebraic equations because in, in fluid flow you get, uh, get nonlinear algebraic equations. So we need to find the displacements such that our set of nonlinear algebraic equations is satisfied. So if you had the exact solution to nonlinear algebraic equations, it'll satisfy, you know, every each one of those algebraic equations and the scalar analog so you know this is easier to think of in uh, in, in a scalar analog so let's say you have one nonlinear equation and we write it as you know uh, in this form and to make this more concrete let's say it's u cubed minus 20 is equal to zero so g of u is u cubed so that's a nonlinear algebraic equation and I want to quickly go through how do you solve this nonlinear algebraic equation using Newton Raphson. Some of you um, should have seen this before. Um, so here's Newton Raphson for single nonlinear algebraic equation. We have, so here I've plotted the left hand side, and on the horizontal axis is, is U. And you get some curve here, and essentially when gu minus f is equal to zero, that's a solution. So this is the solution I'm looking for. And let's, you know, to talk about how the newton raphson solves it, let me switch to the pen from the laser pointer. Okay, so that's the solution I'm looking for. I start off with an initial guess, okay? And then I say, I take that initial guess and I substitute it in here. Now, if that was the exact solution, the right-hand side would be zero, but it's not zero. It's equal to this value. And say, oh, you know, there's a big uh, remainder here. There's actually, you know, in, in this particular context, that's a force. You can interpret that as a force imbalance because this is, uh, this is a force, and um, you have to bring in, you know, another term to make this equal to zero. So that, this is a force imbalance. And say, if this were linear, okay, my curve would look like that. So I take the slope, you know, I can find the slope by differentiating this, and I take that slope and I use that to get my new guess. And I say, okay, now I have a new guess. Let me see how good that is. So I take that new guess and substitute it back in here. And that says that, oh, you know, now 
the that imbalance is smaller but it's still significant so I say you know what I'm not happy with it so again I do the same kind of thing I say oh if it's a linear you know the the curve would look like that and that would be you know my new guess and then I check my residual um, and say oh it's getting better that that's good um, you know as I'm iterating the um, the force imbalance is going down and you you won't get to you know in reality you'll not get to the exact solution but you'll see you know you'll check when the force imbalance is you know below a tolerance and you will stop you know the solver as we will see will stop the the iterations there now the complication is that you know in reality you don't have these nice smooth curves in fact for contact you know you if when it comes into contact suddenly you've gone from zero to a finite traction so you have a nonlinear curve and there is no assurance that you are going to get uh, you know it's going to converge to the um, the the actual solution and of course you know this is for a scalar equation instead of you know updating one value we have to update thousands of values so we start off with thousands of guess values and then you know we keep updating that We'll come back to this when we are, you know, when we look at the force convergence plot in ANSYS.